Has it ever crossed your mind if the right to protest is truly a fundamental freedom in America? It's a question that echoes through the annals of our history, resonating from the cobblestone streets of colonial Boston to the bustling avenues of modern-day Wall Street. Now, let's journey back to the 18th century. A group of colonists disgruntled by unfair taxation boarded ships in the dead of night and tossed crates of tea into the harbor. This act of defiance known as the Boston Tea Party sparked a revolution that birthed a nation. Fast forward to the 19th century and we find abolitionists taking to the streets, demanding an end to the moral abomination of slavery. Their protests, their voices, their relentless fight for justice led to the Emancipation Proclamation and a seismic shift in society. Then there were the women suffragettes of the early 20th century who marched, picketed, and even went to jail to secure the right to vote. Their protests not only won them the ballot, but also marked a turning point in the fight for gender equality. In the mid-20th century, the civil rights movement, led by figures like Martin Luther King Jr., used protest as a tool to challenge segregation and racial injustice. Their peaceful marches and sit-ins brought about legislation that forever altered the fabric of American society. And who can forget the anti-war protests of the Vietnam era or the recent Occupy Wall Street movement? Both used the power of protest to challenge the status quo and in doing so, they sparked national conversations about war, economic inequality, and the very nature of democracy. From the dawn of this great nation, protests have been instrumental in heralding change. They've brought down unjust laws, championed human rights, and given voice to those who once had none. But while these movements have left indelible marks on our collective consciousness, it begs the question, what does the law say about this? The First Amendment, the cornerstone of American democracy, provides legal cover for protests. But what exactly does it entail? In its purest essence, the First Amendment guarantees the freedom of speech, the right to peaceably assemble, and the ability to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This trio of freedoms forms the bedrock of our democratic society, enabling citizens to voice their opinions, come together in unity, and seek change from their government without fear of retribution. But it's not an absolute right. The First Amendment, like all rights, has its limits. The Supreme Court has repeatedly affirmed that the government can impose reasonable restrictions on the time, place, and manner of peaceful protests. For instance, a city can lawfully require a permit for a parade or a large public gathering. It's not about stifling voices or quashing dissent. Rather, it's about ensuring public safety and order. In the same vein, while you can freely express your views, you can't use your speech to incite violence or cause immediate harm to others. The infamous phrase, shouting fire in a crowded theater, is often used to illustrate this point. It's not that you can't shout fire, it's that you can't shout it when it causes panic and poses a clear and present danger. And let's not forget, the First Amendment protects your right to protest in public spaces like streets, sidewalks, and parks. But private property? That's a different story. Owners of private property can set rules about speech and protest on their property. So if you're planning a protest, it's crucial to know where you stand, literally. It's also worth noting that the First Amendment does not shield protesters from the consequences of their actions. If your protest turns violent or if you break other laws during the protest, you can still be held accountable. So, while the First Amendment protects the right to protest, it doesn't give carte blanche. It's a right, not anarchy. In today's highly polarized society, the right to protest is often challenged and sometimes misused. How so? Let's dive into the deep end and expose the undercurrents that are reshaping the landscape of protest in America. One of the most pressing concerns is the response of law enforcement to peaceful protests. In some instances, peaceful demonstrations are met with disproportionate force, turning the streets into battlefields and protesters into combatants. This not only undermines the essence of peaceful protest, but also escalates the tension, creating a vicious cycle of conflict. Another challenge comes in the form of criminalizing protest. There's been a surge in legislation that aims to restrict the right to protest under the guise of public safety. From increasing penalties for blocking traffic to granting immunity to drivers who hit protesters, these laws are seen by many as a direct assault on the First Amendment rights. It's a delicate balance between maintaining order and preserving freedom, a balance that is sometimes tipped in favor of the former. And then there's the misuse of the right to protest. While the Constitution protects the right to assemble and voice dissent, it does not provide cover for unlawful activities. 
Some individuals and groups exploit the cover of mass demonstrations to engage in acts of vandalism, looting, and violence. These actions tarnish the image of protests and give ammunition to those who seek to suppress this fundamental right. The way protests are dealt with varies greatly across the country, largely due to the differing local laws and law enforcement practices. In some places, protests are largely allowed to proceed with minimal interference, while in others they are met with swift and severe responses. This inconsistency further complicates the picture, making it harder to establish a universal approach to handling protests. The right to protest while protected is not a pass for lawlessness. It should promote dialogue, not discord. As we navigate these turbulent times, it's crucial to remember this. Protests are a tool for change, a platform for voices unheard and a reflection of the health of our democracy. They should be nurtured, not nullified. So, where does this leave us on the right to protest in America? Protests in America are deeply rooted in our history and represent a crucial way for citizens to voice their concerns and advocate for change. They're a fundamental part of American freedom, with the right to protest protected by the Constitution. However, it's important to remember that this right has its boundaries. These boundaries, set by both local and federal laws, ensure that protests maintain a degree of order and respect for the rights and safety of others. In today's world, we're seeing new challenges and misuses of this right. It's not uncommon to see instances where the right to protest is abused, leading to unwanted consequences. Yet despite these challenges, protests continue to play a pivotal role in shaping the American society. The right to protest is a powerful tool for change, but like all tools, it must be used responsibly and within the bounds of the law. It is a right that defines America, but it also demands responsibility.